Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us. We started a little bit late, but all glory be to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for your presence. We thank you for inspiration. We thank you for the lives of everyone connected. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for our hearts and minds are open to be inspired by your word and to be touched by your light. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Habits that attract success. That is the title for the message in this Bible study this evening. And I'm excited because I believe someone is getting blessed as a result of this section this evening. Hallelujah. Habits that attract success. Life is not a playground. I'm sure you must have heard that. Life is a battlefield. And this battlefield, no one gets defeated. So when you hear that life is a battlefield, don't get scared and say, ah, what is the hope for me? Of course, there is hope for you because the battlefield of life is not where men get defeated. It's not where the hopes of men are shattered. It's not where the dreams and the aspirations and the ambitions of men are crushed. No. The battlefield of life is what I call the cave of Adulam. It is where the destinies of men are discovered. It is where mighty men are born. Anyone who avoids the battlefield of life, that person has decided not to fulfill destiny. Hallelujah. So when we say the habit that attracts success, what are we talking about? That is because there are really attitudes, there are habits that attract success. There are things that when you do them consciously or subconsciously, you attract success into your life. Studio, I just noticed that some lights are off. Can you please work on it? Thank you. Thank you. So when we talk about the battlefield of life, it is where your dreams are unveiled to you. It is where your vision for life is unveiled to you. It is where you are trained on how to think, how to behave, things you must do and keep doing to keep experiencing the glory from glory to glory experience. Now, there is a man called Ralph Wodo Elmerson. I'm sure you know him. He said something very, very inspiring. And I'll be quoting that. He said, Sow a thought and you reap an act. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny. Did you get that? Now, the focus here in this quote is habits, because that is the title of our message, habits, character, and destiny. In other words, your habits form your character. 
Your character, which determines your destiny, is formed by your habits. In other words, we can conclude that your habits is what determines whether you fulfill destiny or not. Or rather, your habits determines the extent, the height of your accomplishment in life. There are people who don't know that their habits always betray their actions, even in the public. Because what we call habit is a subconscious activity or activities that you do without knowing, without any awareness that you are doing them. That is why it is called habit. Now, let us define habit for a minute as we proceed. Habits have so many definitions, but I'm taking this definition from the Britannica Dictionary for the, for the sake of this teaching this evening. The Britannica Dictionary defines habit as a usual way of behaving, a usual way of behaving, something that a person does often in a regular and repeated manner. Or repeated way. Let's take it again. Habit is defined by the Britannica Dictionary as a usual way of behaving, something that a person does often in a regular and repeated way. And just like I said, most of the time it is subconscious. You do these things without knowing. That is when it has become a habit. Habit is something you engage even without conscious awareness. There is something I would like to show you about the life of Jesus from the book of Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Luke 4 and verse 16. He said, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, underline the word custom, that is another word for habit. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. This was his custom, this was his habit as he was growing up as a child in Nazareth. He formed this habit of always going into the synagogue, spending quite some time there to read. Now, there is another person that captured this quality of Christ, and that is Paul the Apostle. And when I read this scripture, I realized why Paul knew so much about scriptures. I came to understand why he was so deep in his revelations. Even Peter was making a reference to the wisdom that God has, had given to our brother Paul, he said, that even them, we are finding it difficult to comprehend, to understand. That was because Paul the Apostle was a man that also had the habit of going into the temple, into the synagogue, the same way Jesus did. And we saw that in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 2. Acts chapter 17 and verse 2, the New International Version. He said, as was his custom, as was his habit, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, Mm. He reasoned with them from the scriptures. No wonder he was so deep. No wonder he was so accurate. No wonder he was so inspiring. You study the writings of Paul, you will understand Christ, you will understand Jesus, you will understand God. Because he had the habit 
He was a man that had the habit to always reason with people from scriptures in the temple or in the synagogue. Your habit defines your character. Your character defines the extent to which you fulfill destiny. So when we say habits that attract success is a very important subject. And I'm excited you are connected. Hallelujah. I'll be sharing with us the three habits that can make any dummy to become someone or somebody. These three habits, if you engage in it effectively, if you make it part of your life, you will experience greater dimension of fulfillment as a human being. Every successful people that I have studied, including myself, they at least have these three habits actively functioning in their lives. All of them. I study successful people a lot. I study success a lot. Because understanding, the Bible says, is the principal thing in life. He said, wisdom is the principal thing, he says. He said, therefore, get wisdom. But in all that I get in, he says, get understanding. Whatever you don't understand controls you. Whatever you don't understand you cannot control. Whatever you don't understand will be too big for you to comprehend. So understanding is key. Now, what are these three habits? Number one, because of time, the habit of personal hygiene. The habit of what? Personal hygiene that talks about your physical body. Your body is your house. You are a spirit. I'm sure you know that. You are a spirit. You have a soul, which is your mind, your intellect. But you are living in a physical body. And your body is given to you by God. And there is a purpose for your body. Because without your body, you can't function on earth. Without your body, you remain a spirit. The body, the human body, is one of the mystery of God. The Bible says he made the human body, he formed the body of man from the dust of the ground. And then he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Another translation says a living being. The spirit gave the body life. So if you don't take care of your body, You will have to lose it, or you may have to lose it. And if you lose your body, which is what we call death, you go back to God as a spirit. When we don't understand the mysteries surrounding the human body, we neglect the body. We misuse the body. Now look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 5. He said, Wherefore, when he came into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body has thou prepared for me. A body has thou prepared for me. You remember in John chapter 1, 
the scripture we always quote in this ministry because that is that is where the revelation of God started. He said in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. In verse 14 he said and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. A body has thou prepared for me. The word was God. The word became flesh in the person of Jesus. The word is Christ. Christ is not a person. Christ manifested in Jesus. So we call him Jesus the Christ. In Christ, God spoke to us. In Christ, God revealed himself to us. So whatever you cannot find in Christ, don't expect it in your life because it is not God's will. Jesus is the will of God. Jesus is God's will expressed to the human family. For God so loved the world, he says, that he gave his only begotten son. And then he says, whosoever that believeth on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Personal hygienism talks about taking proper care of your body, knowing what to eat to energize your body, exercising your body, keeping your body fit, taking care of your body in every area. In every area. Because when your body becomes weak, it affects your mind. A strong body equals a strong mind. As powerful as your spirit, as powerful as your spirit is, your spirit can be limited if your body, if your body is not properly taken care of. He said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. When you don't understand that your body is what carries you, your body is like the vehicle, and you are inside the vehicle, you are the one driving. If you don't take care of the vehicle, the vehicle determines how speed you can, you can drive, how fast you can meet up appointments, engagements. And this vehicle, over a period of time, you must change the oil. You must fuel it every day to be able to kickstart the engine. You must take care of the car, the vehicle, if the vehicle must serve you to your place of work and then back to your home to your appointment, to all your engagements. So the same way you must take care of your physical body. You must eat healthy, receive the right amount of sleep, exercise, take a walk, wash your body, perfume it, Taking proper care of your body is what personal hygiene is all about. And we don't need to share, to make much emphasis on that. It's a common knowledge. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, Paul revealed a mystery about the human body. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That you present your body a living sacrifice. That means your body is not yours. A body has thou prepared me. God placed you inside this body for you to fulfill destiny. But the fulfillment of destiny 
depends on the strength, the vigor, the energy, the light in your body. He said, offer it to God as a living sacrifice. That means see your body as something that is holy, as something that is very, very precious in the sight of God. A body, he says, has thou prepared me. May the Lord grant us understanding in the name of Jesus. There's another mystery Paul revealed in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 19. He said, Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. He's not going to be in you. He says he's already in you. And I always tell us that your spirit and the Holy Spirit is one. And based on this reality, if I want to speak about your spirit, I will refer to your spirit as the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, not two. So he says, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is God's creative energy. The Holy Spirit is God. The Holy Spirit is life. The Holy Spirit is everything God is. He said that spirit is one with your spirit and is in you. And because that spirit is in you, he said your body becomes something very, very precious in the sight of God. Because when God looks at your body, he's seen the house of his spirit. He said, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. You see that? The body doesn't belong to you. The body doesn't belong to you. You were given a body. A body has thou prepared me. A body has thou prepared me. So you must master the acts of personal hygiene. You must master the act of taking care of your body. It's not everything you eat, no matter how good they, they appear. Some food, when you eat them and continue to eat them, the effect on your body is not good. So when the spirit is willing to carry out God's will and purpose, the flesh will be weak because of what has entered the body through food, through drinks, through so many things. He says, offer your body a living sacrifice to God. He says, it is your reasonable service. It is your reasonable service. Offering your body as a living sacrifice to God means taking proper care of your body. I don't eat everything. I don't joke with physical exercise. I don't just expose my body to anything, even if it is allowed. The Bible says all things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial. And that calls for wisdom. Hallelujah. Number two. The habit of reading. The habit of reading. After mastering the art of taking care of your physical body, you come to your mind. Because you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you are living in a physical body. If any of these two is weak, it will affect the activity of the other. 
the habit of reading that talks about continuous learning you must have heard the saying that says when you keep learning you are young even if you are 80 or 20 and then it says if you stop learning you are old even if you are 20 or 80. The habit of reading is one of the habits that every successful individual on this planet share in common. The habit of reading. We are not just talking about reading. We are talking about selective reading. When we talk about reading, we are not talking about, we are not talking about random reading. You know, there are people that every day, they just read newspaper, they are trying to find out what is the gossip, what is the latest gossip in town, what is, what is this, what is that. That is random reading. It takes them nowhere. When we talk about reading, just the other day I was studying an article, and in that article, they explained that the top 10 highest paid executives in the United States, they read about their field two to three hours every day. It's a habit. They all share it in common. They read at least, that is, if they are too busy, if the schedule for the day is too much, two hours. So imagine if the schedule, like during weekends, they can read for four hours, five hours. I read a lot. It's the first thing I do every morning. I study for like one hour plus two hours, depending on my schedule for the day. It's a habit. And it's one of the habits that attracts success. Because when you don't read selectively, You'll be limited in so many areas. You'll be limited. Because there are so many things you will not know. See, we are not talking about going to school. Even those that have left school and they understood that for them to be relevant, for them to continue to excel in their field they they must keep learning and they are the ones that is now the top 10 in their field and then you see those that left school and after after they left school it's been five years 10 years 15 20 years they have not read even one book about their field such people in their field they are the ones that is not relevant their services, nobody is paying attention because there is no excellence in the service that they render. One of the things reading does is to keep you informed, to keep you enlightened, to add excellence to what you do. Reading adds value to the works of your hands. It enhances the value that you add to others through the services that you render. That is why you can never find any top 10 executive in any field of human endeavor that is not functioning in the habit of reading. I just told you in America, the top 10, that is the highest paid executives. At least every day they read for two to three hours. That is why when you listen to them, you are informed. You spend 30 minutes, one hour with them in a conference or any, anywhere that they are. You just listen to them. You see that they are informed. If it's in the field of banking, you listen to them for 30 minutes, you are inspired. And if you're a banker, you can tap one or two ideas you can implement in your place of work and gain promotion. 
the habit of reading is so vital to command and to attract success. Now let's look at Proverbs 15 and verse 22. It says, without counsel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitudes of counselors, they are established. Another translation said, without counsel, purposes fail. But in the multitude of counselors, they succeed. So when we talk about counselors, we are talking about reading, acquiring information updating and upgrading your mind excelling in your field experiencing from glory to glory lifestyle he said a part of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter and brighter one of the things that makes you shine brighter and brighter is information information is the wings upon which every vision rides anyone that is uninformed according to how our father in the lord bishop david Oyedipo put it he said to be uninformed is to be deformed but to be informed he says is to be transformed and that is Babylica. The same Romans 12 we read in verse 2 of it. It said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? Through information. Information. Quality information. Even the decisions you make, they are determined by the information at your disposal. So if you have the wrong information or outdated information, your decisions will be wrong and outdated when applied. Even as you're listening to me, you must have confirmed that your device in your hand, your phone, your tablet, whatever, over a period of time, you tap some app, they will tell you you are using an older version. Upgrade to the newer version and they will give you option to choose. And if you choose not to upgrade to the newer version, you deny yourself the futures that the newer version carry. So you must upgrade. Sometimes they will not give you more than one option. You must upgrade or you will not use that, that app. That is life. That is life. So you must keep upgrading, you must keep updating, you must keep functioning in the habit of reading to attract success into your life. You must continue to learn. A wise man once said, and I quote, he said, the illiterates of the 21st century are not going to be those who does not know how to read and write. He said, they are going to be those who will not learn, unlearn and relearn. What a smart word. Look at the world today. Everything is becoming smart. Smart this and smart that. Smart this and smart that. You can talk to your TV. You can talk to your phone. You can talk to your car. You can talk to virtually everything these days. And that is a function of continuous learning. Continuous learning. In the telephone industry, imagine if everybody stopped where Alexander Graham Bell stopped. You can imagine how dark the world you know, could have become. But they, they, they passed, they beat that record and they proceeded for that. Today you have all kinds of smartphones all kinds of smart TVs, smart watch, all kinds of devices, smart devices, smart cars. You enter your car, you say, hello, sir, where are we going? You say, take me to number zero, so and so and so. It's okay, right. And there you go. Now imagine the future of the world with the kind of 
upgrading that is taking place with the kind of the speed to which upgrade is taking place imagine the future of the world imagine the next 50 years to 100 years i'm sure even humans will become smart that you can tap into someone's mind without even knowing the person they call it telepathy he said in the multitude of counselors every purpose is established they succeed that is one of the things you gain when you study when you read Paul told Timothy, he said, before I come, commit yourself to reading. In another place, he said, study. Because there is a difference between reading and studying. When you read, you acquire information. But when you need revelation, you have to study. When you study scriptures, for example, what you get is information, the stories of the Bible. Biblical figures, what they did and what they did not do, how God spoke to them and how God did not spoke, speak to them. These are informations. But when you need revelation from the same scripture, you must gather materials to study so that you will understand context. You will understand the meanings of words. You will understand places. Purpose. What is the purpose for this? What was the reason for this? Who was this spoken to? Why was this spoken to this person? You must develop the habit of reading. The hunger to continue to learn. That way you continue to attract success into your life. Now look at Proverbs 13 and verse 16. He said, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth upon his fully. <laughs> Every, not some. It's every prudent man. That means anywhere you see any prudent person, he's functioning in knowledge. He's upgraded. He's updated. He's informed. Because nothing happens for nothing. Those who have the mentality that they must get, they must get something for nothing, they, already, they have already failed. Because nothing is for nothing. Nothing is for nothing. The Bible says, in everything under heaven, it says there is a purpose. There is a purpose. Because life itself, in general, is a function of purpose. He says, every prudent man dealeth with knowledge. They conduct their life activities every day with knowledge, accurate knowledge, updated and upgraded knowledge, knowledge that works, information that works when applied. You must become one of the prudent person that the Bible is talking about. And I see you becoming that from today in the name of Jesus. Master the act of reading, studying, it will change your life. It will revolutionize the way you think. The quote of Ralph Udo Emerson that I quoted earlier started by thinking down to habits, character, and then destiny. You see, each of them that you sow, you reap another one that will take you to the next step. You see, sow a thought, you reap an act. That means actions are propelled by thoughts. As a man thinks, the Bible says, so he acts, so he becomes. And then it says, so that act, you reap a habit. <laughs> it becomes a habit that over a period of time, you will be acting that way without knowing. It has become a habit. Imagine if it's a good habit. That's why, that's why, that's why I'm excited that you are, you are connected on this message. And then he says, so that act, you reap a habit. And then so that habit, you reap a character. The habit over a period of time now form your character. 
and that character is what determines your destiny is what determines how far how far you go in life in terms of achieving success character and that character is a function of habit so you want a good character don't just focus on having a good character focus on your habits what are your habits how do you think how do you act have you ever asked yourself why do i always act this way why am i always behaving this way sometimes you don't know that you are behaving that way somebody have to point it out to you, you say ah, did i actually did do that these are subconscious activities and they are what propels destiny they are what determines whether an individual fails in life or succeeds in life it has nothing to do with background it has nothing to do with anything it has everything to do with you because the good news is that no matter how bad no matter how bad how ugly any situation appears to be it can be changed if the habit that produces those negative situations are bad it can be changed all you have to do is start building good habits habits that will compel the negative situations to turn around to get deleted but you must also understand that you don't just delete old habits and leave the place open first of all there is nothing like deleting bad habits and just leaving it there you delete bad habits by building good habits the good habits will replace the old ones automatic it's not something you achieve overnight but over a period of time you will see that a certain habit has left and the new one has taken place for example we are talking about the habit of reading maybe you are somebody that you find it difficult to sit down and read even these days that we have audio books and all that which also requires you paying attention because you have to listen you have to play the book and then you have to listen in your place of work wherever you are driving your car through and fro you can listen if you can sit down a lot of people are very busy they can't really sit down for even one hour except when they are less busy like during the weekends even the weekends they have to take care of family they have to take the children out and all that so most people are very very busy i understand that but the good news is that you can be playing those audio books no matter where you are in your car at home in at, at the office the audio book is there playing to you all you have to do is to listen pay attention and before you know it you have learned so many things so many things so many things for the day hallelujah Number three, as we begin to round up, the habit of solitude. The habit of solitude. Solitude talks about alone time. It's the habit that makes you always want to separate yourself from the crowd into a quiet place where you can sit undisturbed and think reflect meditate or just feel gratitude just feel grateful to god appreciate life appreciate nature this is also one of the acts of creativity most of the inventions that has enhanced the civilization of man came by on a platform of solitude men and women spending time in their laboratories conducting experiments in the middle of the night 
lonely places, quiet places. And before you know it, an invention is born. Hallelujah. The habit of solitude. We spoke about Jesus earlier, about the habit, the custom of him going into the temple to read. You see, we we'll, we'll talk about the habits of reading. You see that Jesus had that habit also. The Bible says, as his custom was, he always go to the temple and there he always read, he study. The same with Paul the Apostle. He has the habit of going into the temple and to communicate with brethren from the scriptures. No wonder he was so deep. Now, the same Jesus in Mark chapter 1 and verse 35, the Bible says, And in the morning, arising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. And there he prayed. And there he prayed. He departed into a solitary place. And there, the Bible says, he prayed. He meditated. These are habits that from the ancient time has enabled men and women to achieve extraordinary success. And it has not changed. If you engage in the same habit, you will command your own order of success. You will attract good things into your life. He departed. This maybe could be his own time, early morning. Your own time might be during the day or in the evening or in the midnight when the children, everybody has gone to bed. You stay up. You stay up. Most of the time, that is how I do it. Stay up all night. Meditating, thinking, figuring things out, communicating with the spirit that is in you. Most of the time is when I woke up in the morning. As I'm taking my coffee, everywhere is quiet. Before the day will start getting busy, I have, I have downloaded some revelations into my spirit through meditation, through solitude. Very powerful act, solitude. The ability to sit down quietly in an undisturbed place and there you meditate, you ask questions that only you, through the communion of the Holy Spirit, can answer. Hallelujah. Now look at Genesis chapter 24 and verse 63, our last scripture in this section this evening. Genesis 24 and verse 63. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the eventide. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, the camels are coming. <laughs> I love this scripture. Isaac, the Bible says, he went forward. He became great until he became very, very great. That is the man we are reading. That is the man we are reading about. A man that he so prospered in Philistine that the Bible says the kings of the Philistine envied him. Imagine a whole nation envying the prosperity of one man. That is the man the Bible is telling you that he went into the field in the evening. That is his own time in the evening to meditate. Jesus departed into, this, into a solitary place and there he prayed. Isaac, his own is in the evening. He went into the field to meditate. And he lifted up his eyes and saw, Behold, the camels are coming. Behold, the camels are coming. The camels are the one that Rebekah, his wife, was riding on. But that is not the focus the focus is what he went to do when he lifted up his eyes and saw the camels coming. The act, the act of 
solitude. The habit. So he was a man that functioned in the habit of solitude. A man that functioned in the habit that will always make him want to depart from people, separate from the crowd, into the field to meditate. And while he was meditating, there comes the wife. While he was meditating, he saw his blessing. While he was meditating, the answer to destiny was revealed to him. While he was meditating, the contract was approved. While he was meditating, the job application was approved. While he was meditating, him that was sick became healed. While he was meditating, the debt that was owed got paid. While he was meditating, everything worked out for good for him. Engage in these three habits. Engage in these three habits. Personal hygiene, number one, very powerful. Take care of your physical body. Take care of your physical body. Don't let the spirit to be willing and the flesh weak. No, let the spirit be willing and the flesh also be willing. That is how you achieve success and get success attracted to you. And number two, have the habit of reading, selective reading, the art of continuous learning. There is no way you can learn anything that you think you already know. Anytime you think that you already know it, you have shut the door to learn it. So be a man, be a woman with open mind to learn, to understand, to comprehend, to assimilate, to understand what the will of the Father is. Paul speaking, he says, don't be slothful in business. Don't be slothful in business, but understanding what the will of the Father is. And you achieve that as you engage in the habit of reading. And finally, solitude. Solitude. Because of time, we'll end it here. I would have shown you a lot of biblical figures that engaged in these habits and they fulfilled destiny in a groundbreaking style. Wrong with these three habits and may the Lord bless you. May the Lord empower you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord bless you abundantly. May the Lord supply strength, unlimited grace for you to build these habits and function in them all the days of your life. Your success will never know any bound. Your prosperity will never know any bound. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Victory is yours in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go through life, success and prosperity like never before in every dimension of your life will always be your experience in the name of Jesus Christ. As a church, we receive offering at the end of each service. So you want to give your offering, go to our website, jcebayonline.org. Click give online and there you will find all the information to give your offering. And I'm inviting you to connect also on Sunday as we start our theme for the month of May, Commanding Unlimited Success. All through this month and beyond, you shall be commanding unlimited success in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Thank you for joining us and see you on Sunday.